Hi friends, how are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Happy New Year. Happy Year of News. <laughs> uh, my name is Bailey Sarian and today is Monday, which means I have cramps. Oh my God, let me tell you. Look, I was gonna try and be cute and like show up with my hair curled because I'm like, New Year, New Me. But the cramp itch, the sea of blood hemorrhaging from my body, my insides, the crampation of the situation going on down below. And scene, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Bailey Sarian, and on Mondays I sit down and I talk about a true crime story that caught my eye, and then I zoomed in on the situation, and then it just like sat heavy on my noggin. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, oh man, you know, these stories, man, sometimes they just, wow, they get you, don't they? Just, whoosh. Huh? If you haven't subscribed, you should do that. Yeah. <laughs> I like never say that. And then I was just, <laughs> it's been one of those days. Before we get into today's story, we do have a sponsor. So let's take a moment for that. Just popping in here really quick for a word from our sponsor. Hello Fresh. If you're familiar with the weather outside, it's winter time. And during this time, I myself am in hibernation mode. I'm snacking. I'm lounging. So this year, you know, I was like, I'm gonna do something healthier for myself. I need to create healthier habits. But I think the main thing I wanna focus on this year is like de-stressing my life. And one thing that stresses me out the most is when it comes to grocery shopping. You gotta get into the car, find parking, it, weather gets in the way. And if I can stay inside, girl, you know I'm gonna stay inside. And that's why I, love HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that allows you to actually skip meal planning and grocery shopping because HelloFresh delivers step-by-step -step recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients right to your door. I know some of you out there after a stressful day of work or whatever it is you do all day, you get home and you don't wanna leave the house. You just wanna skip that wet and windy schlep to the grocery store. Well, that's good news for you because not only does HelloFresh deliver high quality ingredients for meals at home, but they also have a whole market where you can stock up on snacks, sides, desserts, and anything else your little heart desires. Did you know that HelloFresh is actually cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout? So yeah, HelloFresh is basically my best friend right now because not only are they saving me a trip to the store, they're also saving me money. I don't know about you guys, but when I do end up going to the grocery store, I end up buying a bunch of random stuff because I always go like super hungry. And then once I get home, I don't feel like finding something to cook because I don't have any, I got chips, Bailey. You got chips, girl. So of course I end up ordering takeout, but game changer, you don't have to order takeout anymore because HelloFresh makes a whole line of meals called fast and fresh that are ready in just 15 minutes. You know what else is fast and fresh and can happen in 15 minutes? Exactly. You nasty. But for real, in just 15 minutes, you could have like a meal, like seared steak and potatoes, or my favorite, a Southwest pork and bean burrito. If this sounds like your cup of tea, go to hellofresh.com and use code BAILEYSARIAN21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com and use code BAILEYSARIAN21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. A big thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to today's story. And we're back. So look, today's story was inspired by chicken. Yes, chicken, look at all those chickens. So if you live in the Los Angeles area or you live around the Los Angeles area, you always hear about this restaurant called Zanku Chicken. Like everybody talks about it and how good it is. And if you haven't heard about it, then that's okay too. Like what, you know, whatever. But I heard of it and I was like, look, I roll because chicken's chicken. Like what can you do with chicken? God, like, is it that good? Cause everyone makes it sound like it's the best thing ever. And it has to do with like their sauce. They have some kind of secret sauce. You know, I haven't tried it before, but I, did go to Zanku Chicken and I did eat some of the food. I'll insert that at the end. <laughs> but okay, so look, so Zanku Chicken is around, it's been around. And the thing is, it has like this whole murder story behind it. 
which is even like, what? Two things right at the same time. The chicken sauce is incredible, but murder, like, whoa, two were just, the brain can't compute, bro. That's how it feels sometimes. That's today's story in a nutshell. <laughs> now you can skedaddle on out of here if you don't wanna know the details, but if you wanna know, then let's get into it. Oh, I should do something with this hair. Ah, this is who I am. This is who I am. And I ain't gonna change for nobody. Nobody. So today's story, it's an Arme Armenian family and all of the words are Armenian and very difficult. Now look, some of you may know this, but I myself am Armenian. And you may be thinking, Bailey, how are you gonna be butchering all these names and words? I'm just letting you know. It's my specialty. I don't know, some of you are new here, hi. Um, not to brag or anything, but I had a speech impediment. I still do. I had to take speech therapy classes growing up. I know, humble brag, because uh, my mouth just like has a mind of its own, doesn't let me pronounce words correctly. <sighs> but I try my best. So these ones I'm gonna but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna butcher, okay? So standard up here, let's bring her down a notch. If you're ever curious to know what I'm using, I will list it in the description box down below. And right now I'm trying to decide what look I wanna do. So story time. There was this guy named Mardaros Iskandarian. Now, he was born, step one, born, right? <laughs> he was born in the late 1940s, early 1950s. He also had two younger sisters, uh, Zovig and Hagan. The family owned their own restaurant in the Armenian quarter of Bor, Bor Hamoud. It's called Zen Zenku Chicken, okay? Now this would be like the precursor to the famous LA chain. So it starts there. So at this time, the restaurant was super casual. There weren't any tables. They didn't have a cash register. It was more like you came in, you got your food and you know, they would be like, give you your change out of their pocket. You know, it was great. It worked for them. It was very popular, okay? Now this place was so popular because they had the signature fluffy white garlic paste that Marguerite, the mother, she not only created herself, but also she would make it every single day. The secret sauce of Zanku's success was literally their secret fluffy garlic sauce. I mean, nobody knows the recipe to this day. And oh my God, it's good. It's so good. So being the oldest child and also the only son, Murdurios, he pretty much like had it made. His family was just overall very successful. And Murdrios was said to be um, a very handsome looking guy, allegedly, you know? He was very charismatic. People just really liked him. Liked him, they wanted to be around him. And then on top of that, like he also drove this like super bright yellow Oldsmobile. And I guess it was like just like cool. He was absolutely adored by his parents, especially his mommy. You see, Madrios was definitely a mama's boy. They were very close, okay? He could never do wrong in her eyes. They were always together, okay? And that goes like across the board. The whole family was really always together, but he was a big mama's boy for sure. Every year, Madrios would throw Mother's Day pageants within the community. And like these were these big celebrations and parties and just, I don't know, you know, it was just a big thing that they would do. And every year he would crown his own mom as queen, queen of motherhood to be specific. Yeah, I'd crown and everything. So he loved her. She was queen of motherhood. So his Oldsmobile is like what got him a lot of the attention. And it especially caught the eye of this 12 year old girl. Her name was Rita. I guess she like had lived across the street from him in an apartment. Rita said she would sit on the balcony and like daydream about Madrios. Uh, she would just watch him across the street. And she was like, oh my God, this was like love at first sight. This was a classic 12 year old crush, you know? Great, you get it, you get it. First crush, one of my first crushes was on Aladdin. Oh, I thought he was so hot, Aladdin. Oh. Prince Eric, 
would bang. So Rita was an Armenian Catholic schoolgirl, and Mardrios was the classic like bad boy in school, you know, like the jacket, and he just had the cool car, and all over town, everyone knew him as a womanizer. Like this man, he would make sweet, sweet lovin' to anything with a hole, you know. You know the type. Now, Mardrios started to pay attention to Rita because he started to notice that she was blossoming into a young woman, which is like so creepy, you know? Like she's getting boobs, she's, you know? Anyways, I guess he was liking what he saw and the two ended up starting to like see each other. They were dating, you would say, regardless of the fact that Rita was still a teenager and Mardrios was like a full-blown adult at this, at this point. Now, they wisely kept this little secret relationship um, just that, Bailey, a secret. Well, for a couple of reasons. One, of course, the age difference, right? But also Mardrios wanted to keep it a secret because he was, he was a fuck boy. So like, he didn't want to tell anyone he was in a relationship. He wanted to still do his thing, but then have his, his main girl, you know? So it was kept a secret. Not a lot of people knew about the, them dating, so. Several years before the two had started dating, Mardrios was like semi-involved in a murder and robbery of a jewelry store. Now, supposedly, Mardrios, he didn't actually do anything. You know, he was like, actually, no, it was my three friends that were staying the night at my house that night, but not me. So I guess Mardrios at some point, he went up to his attic and he found a bunch of stolen jewels and he decided to do the right thing and he turned in his friends. And his testimony would be what sent all of them to prison. If he's truly like innocent and really didn't know, then like good for him, that's gotta be a hard thing to do. You don't wanna send all your friends to prison, that sucks. But, you know, this is murder mystery and makeup. We hear all types of stories. It's like, sh maybe he was just trying to get ahead of it. That's just my opinion, I don't know. So after the whole thing went down, a lot of people in town didn't want to associate themselves with Mordrios because they linked him with the crime. Like everyone thought he was a part of it. He was seen as like a bad guy. So after the whole thing went down, Mordrios, he ended up buying two guns and he was he would keep them with him at all times because he was worried that if like one of those guys, his ex-friends had gotten out of prison, they would come for him. And honestly, they probably would because, you know, come on. So he loaded up on guns. I got upper lip sweat, look. It's the cramps. Moisture is coming from me. So he is panicking a bit, which probably like isn't the worst thing considering Beirut and Lebanon are now like, or were like smack dab in the middle of a brutal civil war. But anyways, back to the love story, I, I guess. Rita's teenage dream played out big when their parents finally believed that the two were like genuinely in love. They were like, okay, we believe you, you guys have been together for a while you know what, uh, you guys can get married. So they allowed them to get married. Rita was 19 and Mardrios was 26. But even though they were indeed married, Mardrios made one thing very clear. He said this like out loud to Rita many times, that Rita would always come second to the most important woman in his life, his mother. Ugh. Uh, I mean, like, that's fine if you feel that way, but maybe just, like, don't say it out loud, you know? I mean, for Mordrios, he would say, next to God would come his mother. But yeah, Mordrios told Rita that she would always be second place and that he planned to live with his mother forever. And, like, a lot of that had to do with probably how uh, cherished and, like, spoiled he was by his mom. But he also said that he just really admired her her work ethic. And it's his mom. He loved her, you know? He said his dad was cool, but, like, he loved the shit out of his mom. Now, his father, who everyone would say was, like, overall a very loving and good man, was known to have some bad habits. Like, he would go on long benders and he would disappear for a while. But his mother was, like consistent. She was always around. And she was just always there for them. Their dad, he would go missing for a couple days. 
No one asked questions. And not only was his mom around for him and like his sisters and the family, but she was also always around at the restaurant. I mean, she worked nonstop, making sure that the place kept running no matter what. Meanwhile, her husband was off getting wrecked. You know, I can understand why he loved his mother. So she just seems like an all around amazing person. And her hard work would pay off. The family continued to thrive in Beirut and Zanku was killing the game so hard. I mean, the Iskandarian family, they started investing in real estate and would go on to become landlords, which is great. Um, you know, owning property is great investment, they say, except that they were landlords in like an actual war zone. So not ideal. Well, in 1979, Madrios gets tangled up in another little shenanigan yet again. Now, I guess this time there was some kind of rental dispute um, with like one of the tenants who was renting the property that they owned, right? This tenant apparently had political connections that were just not exactly great, you could say. While outside of one of the buildings, two men on motorcycles, they pulled up pulled up like right next to Murdrios and they shot him 16 times. I know, and this part like blew my mind. They shot him 16 times, but they shot him at like a really close range with a freaking AK-47, 16 times. And guess what? Wait, that's not even the amazing part. He lives, he lives. It's, I think it's the freaking, it's the garlic sauce or something. This man has incredible luck. This man is just, Unbreakable. They're alive, damn it. Anyways, that's not even the story. We haven't even gotten to the murder, to the actual stories, which is wild, right? It's already been a roller coaster. So after surviving this close range hit with machine guns, the entire family decided like, it's probably best if we all leave Lebanon. And they decided to do just that. They would end up moving all the way to uh, beautiful, sunny ass Los Angeles. California, if you don't know. That's a drastic change, right? Good for them. Not just for the glitz and glamor of Hollywood, but because the Los Angeles area has one of the largest Armenian communities. And when your ancestral home gets literally burned and then you have to flee again, it's nice to go to a community that shares somewhat a, a cultural connection. So once the whole family gets to Los Angeles, Murdrios' parents, uh, they wanted nothing to do with the restaurant business, which is like kind of shocking, but they just wanted like a completely fresh start. And they ended up at first, they were looking into starting like a different line of work for the family. So at first when they get to Los Angeles, they're like, okay, we're gonna do, you know, a family dry cleaning service. But I guess the whole dry cleaning thing didn't work out because the chemicals were, were making Murdrios sick. And it's all about him. Can't get him sick, the, you know, the oldest of the family. So they had to stop because he was getting sick. So after that, they tried their hand at importing menswear, but I guess that didn't go very far either. And this whole time, Mardrios started seeing that within the bustling Los Angeles community of not just Armenians, but a lot of the Middle Eastern immigrants, there was actually like a need for a restaurant like Zanku. So at this time, it's the year 1983, and Mardrios goes to his parents and he convinces them like, you guys, there's no good food out here, okay? We need to bring the restaurant Zanku back and come on, pop out some bangers out here because there wasn't any good food. So they did just that. They opened up their restaurant once again, but this time in like a little strip mall in East Hollywood. Right off the bat, it was an almost instant hit. I mean, word of mouth like spread quick that there was this incredible casual restaurant with this amazing chicken and this incredible secret garlic paste that people were literally losing their shit over. The garlic paste is just incredible and people's heads were exploding. Let me tell you, it was just different. It was different. Now from the beginning, not only did it get praise from just word of mouth, but there were a ton of write-ups in the Los Angeles Times and across many other like food critic reviews, 
in magazines and newspapers and stuff, and everybody was talking that Zanku chicken was the shit. Like it was the conversation, it was the chicken. So by the end of their second year, I think it was, the new Zanku chicken was bringing in something like $2 million a year. Yeah, they're making money, okay? So the son, Mardrios, he is pushing his parents to yet again get them into, I don't know, the idea of expanding. You know, cause like to him, it seems like a no brainer. This chicken is fire. Everyone needs to eat it. We should expand. And the parents were just kind of iffy about it. Like, I don't know, it, it was just a family thing we did. Like, you know, but finally in 1991, his parents were like, fine, okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. But with a twist, they were going to split the Zanku brand. So his parents would keep running the original restaurant that they had opened up while Mardrios would take on one of the new chains. But one thing for sure was that Mardrios' mother would still be the one making the garlic paste and she would continue to make it and it would be served at all locations. So it was like consistent paste, okay? So she's working harder than ever. It's like, give her a break, damn. She's busting out paste left and right. Mardrios' mother, uh, we can't confirm this, but it was said that like she she didn't take a salary at all, uh, and she did this all for the family, which is like, mm, you know, very touching. So unfortunately, tragedy does hit the family when Mardrios' dad dies shortly after the expansion had just started. So now Mardrios, uh, he is he's taken on the head of the household role, you know, he's the man in charge. So Mardrios, he was true to his word to never live away from his parents. Like his mother lived in this giant mansion in the hills with him, Rita, and their four sons. So Mardrios, he ended up kind of being just like his own father. You know that old saying, the apple doesn't fall from the tree. It goes something like that. You know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. Anyways, so Mardrios, he didn't spend time with his family, like at all. He still wanted to be that fuck boy. And he also just wanted to do whatever the hell he wanted to do. Like he was a successful guy in charge. He was making a lot of money. He had the wife, he had the kids, he had the house, he had the cars, he had it all. I mean, he just, you couldn't tell him nothing, okay? And also you couldn't really be that mad at him because the restaurants were doing well. They were in great shape um, and very successful. So it's like, again, can't tell him nothing. Of course, as time went on and more and more money is being made, Mardrios would become friends with like fellow rich douchebags in the area. And then they would go off and do like rich guy stuff in Vegas all the time where Mardrios would take a lot of the Zanku chicken money and they'd go to Vegas and they'd spend it on all the good stuff. The ladies, the gambling, the alcohol, just Vegas. And like he wasn't shy about his wealth either. He loved to flaunt it. He loved to be flashy. And it's sad because you know, Mardrios is going through all this. Meanwhile, his mother is still showing up every single day to the restaurant, cooking, making her the sauce, okay? And then after working all day, she would come home and cook at night for her grandkids. So, I mean, obviously it's fair to say the two of them had very different lifestyles, but Mardrios, his fortunes would take a sharp, turn when he started to feel very unwell. He would complain of pain like in his stomach area and his family would be like, you should go to the doctor, get that checked out. But you know, guys, I'm not trying to stereotype or anything, but if you try and tell a guy to go to the doctors, what do they do? They don't. Exactly. So Mardrios is like, no, it's fine. It's just acid reflex or whatever. But eventually the pain gets so bad in his stomach that he ends up going to the doctor and he got the horrible diagnosis of bladder cancer. And by the point that he had gone to the doctor, it had spread to where it was now terminal. Oh yeah, done, done so. And it was a really sad thing. And to his credit, the first thing Mardrios thought about was his family and how he needed to make sure that they were gonna be taken care of. Like 
once he was gone. Remember, well, let's recap. His mother and his sisters owned and ran the original Zanku chicken, while Mardrios owned the, at this point, four others in the chain at the time. They had expanded. A lot. So Mardrios thought nothing of it when he told to his mother and his sister Zovig that when he died, he wanted his four sons to take over the four other Zanku chickens. To him, it seemed like a totally normal request. Four sons, four Zanku chicken restaurants, done and done, right? Like, it makes sense to him. But when Mardrios' mother heard this proposition, she freaked out. She was She was so upset by this news. She was not thrilled that the sons were gonna be taking over. And honestly, she had some good reasons as to why they shouldn't take over. I guess Mardritos, his his sons, you know, they weren't like uh, ideal. And they're all still alive. And I think they live kind of close to me. So let's just say like, they weren't great. No, but I mean, like, they were shitty workers. You know, they were considered prime Zanku chicken material. Okay, so let me explain a little bit. Madrios and Rita, his wife, remember, they had four sons. So at the time of Madrios' cancer diagnosis, the kids were from the ages of 25 down to 17 years old. One of the kids, when he was 18, was addicted to pills, while another one of his kids was addicted to spending stupid amounts of money on weed. Yeah, the two oldest sons of Madrios, they had been involved in their own scandals as like an undergrad. I guess they got caught cheating on law school entrance exams, which I guess is pretty serious because he actually had to pay a criminal fine and went on probation. Worst part is it totally killed any hope of like getting into law school as no one would accept a cheater. So these these kids are just kind of making not the best decisions as many do growing up. One of the kids though, after this whole scandal school situation went down, tried to turn his life around and became a born again Christian and went very extreme and became very vocal about his relationship with God. He went so far as to spend his days as like a street preacher telling people they were going to hell. You're going to hell, you're going to hell. Just like everyone's going to hell. And then uh, he would come home and spend his nights telling his brothers that they were also going to hell. It was just kind of like the kids were just unwell is what I'm getting at. They, I think they were having a hard time finding themselves. And this is the reason why Mardrios' mother and sisters didn't want his kids running any of the Zanku chickens. They're just all over the place. Figure it out, you guys. You can't run a restaurant. And the most troubling of the Iskandarian boy's problem were with the second son. Um, His name was Steve. Steve allegedly got into a a bit of a tangle with a, uh, a, a prostitute and her pimp. They tried to steal money from him. So he like chased them down a freeway and, 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 and like shot at them, whole mess. He ends up getting arrested and then he had a bail set at $1.4 million. And obviously was facing up to life in prison, but was never convicted due to a technicality. So it worked out for him. Nobody's learning lessons here, okay? They're kind of getting away with shit. As Madrios' sons are growing up, uh, Madrios' mother is watching. Obviously, she loves her son so much, and she's never lived a day apart from him ever. She started to really see that the how ungrateful and maybe not the best the boys were, and it would create fights. There was tension, tension going on. I guess Mardrios' mother even got to the point where she really wanted to get rid of Rita. Like she wanted them to break up because she thought maybe Rita was the problem and she needed to come in, take over, fix her son, fix her grandkids, and Rita just seems to leave. Okay, that was like her goal. Ladies, what do we do when we're upset? What do we do? What are we good at? The silent treatment. So Mardrios' mother was like, you know what? I don't like any of you guys. I'm not gonna be talking to you guys anymore. And she gave her son, her beloved son, the silent treatment. 
She like ghosted him. This is huge. He hadn't gone a day without talking to his mom. So this was like, he is shooketh to the core. Now, even though Madrios and his mom lived in the same freaking house, they managed parts of the same company. And the fact that she found out Madrios is now dying of terminal cancer, she just stopped talking, talking to him. She ghosted him, gave him the silent treatment. She was done. Every day when she would come home from work, she would say hi to Rita, pour herself a glass of water, and then go straight to her room without saying a word to her son. She's like, I'm going to show you, you little bitch. Sometimes the silent treatment feels good. That tension, you're just like, yeah, this is my water. Hi, Rita. And nobody else in the room. You know, it feels good. But you shouldn't do it because it's petty. But like sometimes it feels good. So things obviously not great between mother and son. And Madrios is really having a hard time with this. I mean, he's dying. This is when he needs his mommy the most and she's not speaking to him, you know? It's getting to him, things are boiling up inside. And Madrios, I don't wanna say like he had an, obviously he didn't have an easy life, but like he just, he didn't know how to handle re rejection, not getting something that he wanted. So he wasn't handling this like at all. And not only was his, his cancer definitely terminal, but the treatments that he was participating in in hopes to buy him more time, more months or whatever, were making him really just sick. They were creating like fluid buildup in his brain and his body's just breaking down. He's getting thin, he's getting sickly. And he's just kind of spiraling, really getting fixated on his mom. And how dare she not talk to me? And he's just getting worked up over it. I guess at one point he was so mad at his mom that he told Rita that he would forgive the devil himself before he forgave his mother. Drama. Family drama is so petty. Cause we're looking at this like, get the fuck over at you two, oh my God. But okay, here we are, you know? So, I mean, as you could probably imagine, it would be very uncomfortable living with someone who was not only giving you the silent treatment, but giving you the silent treatment while you were dying of cancer. It'd probably make you go a little crazy. Then one night randomly, Madrios' house catches on fire. Oh yeah, it was like this whole thing. The house doesn't burn down, but it catches on fire. And Madrigos' mother ends up moving out because of the fire. She felt like it was unsafe. Um, nobody knows how the fire started, but there's lots of rumors. And because she felt unsafe, she decided to go now live with her daughter, Zovig. So this is just another thing for Madrigos, like this random house fire, mom moved out. It, everything's falling apart. Now get this. A whole year goes by and Madrios doesn't hear a word from his mommy dearest, nothing. Not even a hi, not even a K, not even a nothing, crickets. I was gonna try and make a cricket sound, but I don't know how to do that. No. Anyways, it gets to the point where Madrios is so sick that he knows he only has weeks to live and they still haven't spoken. So he wants to reach out, allegedly, Madrios wants to reach out to his mom, but he's too prideful. He's not going to, he wants his mom to, but like time's ticking. He's like a time bomb. Tick, tick, yeah. Well, finally, one day, something changed in Madrios. Maybe he was ready to have the conversation with his mom, say sorry, whatever. And on the morning of January 14th, 2003, at this point, Madrios is like very frail, can barely take care of himself, Has needs help showering and doing just his basic self-care. This morning, he wakes up, he showers, he puts on a suit, very different. A fact that I just felt like I needed to add into the story because I, he puts on a fresh diaper. I had to keep that in there. I was like, okay, tell me more. And he decides, you know what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go visit my mom and my sister. So it's like, oh, look, finally, he's gonna do it. He's gonna, you know, say sorry maybe, and perhaps shit himself. I'm sure many of us can relate, like if you're dying and you wouldn't wanna go your last days without seeing your, someone you love, someone you're really close to, your beloved mother, 
one last time, right? So it makes sense. That's what he's going to do. That's what he tells his family. So Madrios gets into his car and drives himself over to his sister's house. This is all just very, again, unusual because Madrios is so sick that he needs help um, being taken care of, but he puts on that diaper and he makes an effort to drive by himself over to see his family. So like that was just unusual, but nobody's questioning it because again, like just let him have his dying wish, you know, just let him drive him and him and that diaper into the sunset. <laughs> so I haven't mentioned too much about Murdrios's sister, Zovig, but Zovig and Rita were very close and they raised their sons more like brothers than cousins. Murdrios was always looking out for his sister and nephews and had always vowed to take care of them and like vice versa. So Rita and Zovig split parenting duties and then Murdrios's mother, even though she worked insane hours, she still made time for all of her grandsons. And again, never until recently had lived apart from Murdrios. So it's Murdrios, his sister Zovig in the house. They're sitting down, they're making small talk, casual small talk. And it was said that they chatted for like at least half an hour as they waited for Murdrios' mother to come home. And when she finally did come home, she said her first words to him that had been spoken in years. She said, hello. I know groundbreaking. It seems like a step in the right direction though, right? Rodrios' mother pours herself some lemonade and the three of them head to the living room, sit down to have a conversation and talk. And you're, yeah, like so far so good, right? Well, nay, nay, my friend. <laughs> Remember way back when in the beginning of the story when I said Murdrios was in Beirut and he was all paranoid and he purchased like two handguns to protect himself against his crazy friends? Well, he actually got the opportunity to finally use those guns on his mother. While the, they're sitting in the living room having conversations, Murdrios pulls out his gun and guns, and first he shot his sister Zovig just once, right in the head, and just kills her instantly. And then he sees his mother get up from the couch, and she knows exactly, like, she just bolts it, okay? She bolts it for, for the door, but Murdrios caught up with her. According to either Zovig's son or the housekeeper, it's unclear who, but someone said that at one point they heard Murdrios's mother begging Murdrios in Armenian not to shoot. And then following that, he shoots her anyway. And he shoots her right in the chest. And it was said that she fell straight onto her back. And then diaper boy over here stands over his mother's body and shoots her eight more times. Like diaper boy, chill the fuck out, man. Oh my God. The analysis concluded that with each shot, he was aiming for her heart, but he kept missing. So he kept going. Like, I mean, this horrifying, awful. But what's extra sad is that sitting on the family um, staircase was Zovig's son. And he had been watching like what was going down. And he said afterwards that Madrios saw him frozen on the staircase, but Madrios didn't say anything to him, didn't acknowledge him, just kind of they made eye contact and Madrios just kept walking on by. Well, after Madrios did his thing, he goes back to the living room and he sits down on the leather couch and he ends up shooting himself right in the temple. Yeah. Now, because this was a murder-suicide, there was no trial, but after everything went down, there was a ton of family drama, um, I'm sure you can imagine. A lot of it had to do with like trademarking and who owned what and just business-related stuff. Miraculously, Zanku Chicken, the actual restaurant itself, survived this insanity, but it ended up getting split into two factions. You have Rita and her sons owning like one side 
and then Madrios's remaining um, sister on the other. They're the same company, but they're just not talking to each other. But they still have the same sauces, but they're just not talking to each other. It sounds petty, but it's also, who are we to judge, you know? So even though they share the same logo, the same name, the same damn garlic dip whipped recipe, not because like they're sharing it with each other, just because like they each have it for themselves. They still have completely different websites and if you go visit their websites, they don't mention any of this, obviously, but it's just, I wanna say it's like so petty, but at the same time it's murder and stuff. So it's like, I, I <laughs> you know, maybe one day they'll come together. Zanku Chicken though has definitely survived. They have up to now eight locations around Los Angeles and is one of SoCal's most successful mini chains. Oh yeah. Wow, wait a minute, you guys. I finished the story and I didn't even finish my makeup. Oh dear. Happy New Year. Now, naturally, I hadn't eaten Zinku chicken. I heard about it a bunch, but after researching the story and whatnot, I was like, I gotta try this chicken. Like, let me just try it. So I did. There's no words to describe how good that garlic, I don't know. I don't know, like, I didn't wanna believe it. I didn't wanna believe the hype. I didn't wanna give in. I went in with a bad attitude, like, I'm not gonna like it. Everyone likes it, they're all exaggerating. Ugh. Like, I had a bad attitude. And then I ate it. And something happened to my body. It was so good. And I'm not even kidding. I tried it. And then the next day I ate it again. And then I took a break. And then the next day I went again. I'm so sorry. So what I'm getting at is today's story is horrible because kids are spoiled as fuck. Parents work hard. In this case, Mordrios' parents worked their asses off to take care of the family, to come to America for a better life. And just made some great ass chicken and stuff. Became very successful. And look how their son repays them. Ah, birth control, right? Fuck that guy. So that's the Zanku chicken murders. It's really sad, but they have really good chicken. I'm so sorry, it's not funny. It's just like such a, what do you do? Let me just put on some mascara and like a gloss because ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You know when it's that time of the month, you're getting your oil changed. You're bleeding. Your makeup and face just ain't the same, am I right? So let me just finish the look and I'll, I'll be right back. All right, my friends, and this is the finished look. She's natural, she's flawless, she's bloated. Who is she? She's me, Bailey Sarian. Oh, I looked better with the headband on. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Please make good choices. If you have any grudges, pettiness going on within the family, I'm not here to judge or tell you what to do, but I heard this song once that I think may inspire you. It goes something like this. Let it go, let it go, let it... Copyright claim, I know. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. You make good choices. Let me know down in the comment section down below what story you want me to talk about next time. And also if you have any advice on, I don't know, how to get rid of cramps, that'd be great. I've tried everything, okay? <sighs> Sick of this shit. I gotta do this for how long? Okay, anyways, I love and appreciate you guys so much and I'll be seeing you very soon. Goodbye.